once again, we're back into uh, how do we make uh, products that are not requiring petroleum. And this is a good example as we grow them. And uh, the Havea rubber production uh, in Indonesia is still a booming business, but the problems associated with Havea rubber is that it contains many proteins that people become allergic to. Uh, rubber gloves, balloons, catheters. And so they have to find alternate, alternate products that give the same quality and characteristics as Havea rubber, the soft flexibility and uh, its use in biological systems. And so this Waiule is an excellent uh, alternative to Havea rubber. And uh, the original research in the 30s was to develop it for airplane tires. Airplane tires have to be soft, flexible, remain flexible even when frozen at high altitudes. And uh, that's why the Havea rubber is so popular. And now it's been replaced with much of this Waiule, but they're still, they're, they're now integrating into uh, airplane tires as well. This is critical for the United States because we import 100% of our natural rubber into the United States. About 90% of the natural rubber uh, global supply of natural rubber comes from Southeast Asia. And the big advantage for it is that the plant uses very little water in growing. It uh, is harvested very easily using a water extraction. Well actually, you know, Native Americans used to uh, extract rubber from Waiuli. So they would take the plant, put it in their mouth and chew it, and then they'd extract the rubber in their mouth. And, they, and there are old um, rubber artifacts. Uh, supposedly, there are, uh, you know, the Aztecs had a game, they played with a rubber ball. Uh, or I can't remember, it was the Aztecs or the Mayans, I can't remember, and they would hit it off their hip. And there are a lot of um, publications that suggest that Waiuli was a source for that natural rubber. The uh, beautiful thing about Waiuli is since it is a desert shrub, then it is one that doesn't need as much water as many other crops do, and, and it is a perennial crop. So we can grow it, and we can harvest it, and it'll grow back, and we'll harvest it, and it'll grow back, and we'll harvest it. So you, as, as it gets older after each harvest, after each year, the root structure gets bigger and more complex and more efficient at uh, capturing the water that's being used. We're focused on natural rubber, but we, the plant is, is a chemical factory, so there's a lot of resin. Um, it has about as much resin as it has natural rubber, and, uh, and, and it also has wax. And that's sort of more on uh, major sort of uh, product opportunities. There are likely to also be specialty chemical opportunities that Waiuli offers. And our goal is to build a biorefinery that would enable us to capture all of these different products that we can get from this desert shrub.